I'm Jared Gardner and I'm an Associate Professor of Pathology and Dermatology at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. And I'm here today with Dr. Victor Prieto, who is a Professor and Chair of Pathology at University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, and is also the 2018 Nickel Award uh, winner. Dr. Prieto, thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you so much. And thank uh, you. it's a special pleasure for me because Dr. Prieto was one of my earliest mentors in Dermpath when I was uh, re a resident. Actually, when I was even in med school before residency, I had the chance to sit with him at the scope. And so many of the pearls I teach my students to this day came straight from this guy here. So it's a real, a real oh. honor to have you with us. Oh, thank you. So the Nickel Award celebrates teaching, right? Teaching of dermatopathology. And by all counts, you're an excellent teacher. And I know that personally. Oh, yeah, nice. um, why did you decide to be a teacher of dermatopathology? Well, that's a in very interesting question. I, I think that y you do what you see in your mentors. You know? And I was very, very th um, uh, fortunate to have fantastic mentors that really loved teaching. So to me, it was an extension. It was nothing to discover. It's simply what I saw. I just repeated it. And um, as, as I mentioned yesterday, so some of the mentors that were yesterday, in the, at the meeting, so uh, just to mention two of them, Christopher Shea mm -hmm. and John Reed, and also um, my mentor in dermatopathology, Scott McNutt, who was not there yesterday. So tell me about Dr. McNutt. I, I know there are many prominent dermatopathologists, you included, that were trained by him, and uh, it, se it seems to me like he had some magical thing where he either knew how to pick people, but all these people that he trained have become these really great academic dermatopathologists. What, what was the magic with Dr. McNutt? Well, actually, it's very interesting. A few years ago, when he retired, um, Bruce Moller mm -hmm. had a, a, a little get-together at, at Arkansas. Yeah. So, and, and he showed a slide that I thought was very revealing with the spikes, meaning the first generation, that was him, and then the second generation of his fellows and mentees, and then the third generation, and now there was a fourth generation of those mentees that had been mentoring somebody just else floating out exactly right? so it, and it's very interesting but you mentioned that because some of them became chairs uh, some of them became fellowship directors and uh, many of them have been involved in into teaching so i don't know what the magic you know cauldron was but definitely he knew the ingredients on how to do it how did he teach when you were uh, you know, in, in training under him what was his style of teaching at the scope well he was very practical so i as you know, you look at the slides and you point out the important things. Mm -hmm. So uh, little pearls, if you want, of wisdom. So like saying, well, this tumor is usually seen in women and is usually seen on the forearm. And then he would check the clinical history and it would be a woman on the forearm and the lesion. And it would be something that you will remember for the next yeah. time, correct? Because it wasn't only a dry list of these are the characteristics. It was really applied to, so it was easier to remember. That's cool. You know, Bruce, I had a chance to work with Bruce uh, when I first started practice, uh, kind of remotely, but he taught me a lot of things. It was almost like getting to do a second fellowship, so I'm really grateful to Dr. Smoller for that. But he would often do that, and I picked that up from him, that he would say, don't look at the history, just look at the slide, and then let's see if we can figure out the history. And sometimes you're really right, and it impresses the students, yeah. and sometimes you're wrong. And, yeah. and I also learn from that the times that I'm wrong, like, oh, huh, this finding does occur in other sites, and it it teaches me more, and, and I think it keeps the, the trainees happy when they see their attendings be wrong sometimes, too. <laughs> Correct, yeah. Uh, how have you, uh, what is it like being a department chair? It's a big responsibility, and I've always wondered, I think being a chair is a different level than just being a fellowship director or something like that. And well, I mean, overall, it is the same in the sense that you're responsible for a group of people. Uh, whether it is two people, meaning that somebody working with you in the fellowship program and the fellow, or if you have, like we have in our department, 65 faculty. Yeah. So, and I guess it is basically the same in the sense that you have to manage uh, for the, the academic aspirations mm -hmm. of the whole group. So in the case of being a fellowship director, you have to make sure that the person is going to learn enough sure. that it will be able to continue his or her career, meaning academic, or mm -hmm. meaning, meaning pra uh, private practice, or whatever the, it leads to them. So. I would say that the administrative work obviously increases significantly, but the, the bottom line is that uh, you're trying for everybody to get to the level at, that they ac aspire to be. Yeah, that's, that's really great. So you're kind of enabling people to, 
to achieve whatever their their goals are for their career. Well, at least that's the goal. That's the goal, so, right? So. Well, I think you must be doing it well because your department is uh, puts out amazing uh, material, teaching, and academic uh, works and scholarly works. Mm -hmm. You've accomplished a lot personally in your career. Um, you've written a lot of papers. You've written. You've done many things. What? Uh, which of your accomplishments uh, stands out as the most meaningful to you personally? Um, probably the teaching. Uh, you know, because I, I, I'm very proud of the Dermatopathology Fellowship, and we started it when I joined MD oh, Anderson. Wow. And so, and then for a, a few years, uh, I was the fellowship director until I relinquished that. Now it's Dr. Doyne Ivan, mm -hmm. and. Because of what we discussed yesterday at the ceremony, that how rewarding to yourself is when you when you teach somebody, and you see that not only the knowledge that it was useful, but you see that this person is also able to teach somebody else. Yes. Correct. So I, I think that's probably the, the most rewarding thing that's I've done. That's awesome. Well, I clearly it's uh, everyone else agrees, and that's why you won oh, the Nickel you. Award. And you know, Tom Helm. Uh, past president of ASDP, he said something at, at the president's banquet a few years ago that really resonated with me. And he said, you can never repay your mentors, you can only pay it forward. And I mean, that's uh, that's what I'm doing when I teach. I'm repaying you and all the other people. So I, I can see exactly what you're saying, that that's it, the teaching and then watching that get passed on is so meaningful. So I, I aspire to, to try to follow your trail and thank you for the wonderful example you've set for, for dramatic pathology trainees everywhere. Um, not at all. It's, it's actually a pleasure. Well, Victor, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much to you and to the society. Sure. Thank you.